Today we have with us Isbenek Lovalik, founder and CTO of Catify. Isbenek, great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. First of all, thanks for joining me today. And today we are going to talk about Keda graduation. But before we get into graduation and the whole project, talk a bit about what is Keda? What is the origin of the project? What is the problem it is solving for the larger CNCF cloud native ecosystem? In short, like Keda tries to make uh, Kubernetes application auto scaling as simple as possible. So basically, we are enabling users to scale their workloads uh, based on various different metrics. Because the default built-in horizontal pod auto scaler, which is present in Kubernetes, uh, can only scale your applications. You can scale your applications only by resource consumption, so by CPU or memory or memory usage. But you know there are certain use cases when you would like to scale your application by a different set of metrics. Maybe some custom metrics. Maybe some events happening in uh, in the external system. And this is uh, what Keda provides. So we are trying to, we are trying to not you know build something new, but we are extending the capabilities of, of Kubernetes and the HPA. So we are building on top of it. So imagine, for example, the simple use case I'm like usually giving is that imagine that you have some application that is a consumer. It is consuming some messages and, per, and processing those messages. And it is consuming the messages from some, uh, some event, uh, event system or messaging system, for example, Kafka. So it could be like Kafka topic. And you would like to auto-scale your application, the consumer, based on the number of unprocessed like, messages in the, in the Kafka topic. And this is what, what Keda does. Plus, it enables you to scale scale to zero, because HPA cannot scale to zero, but with Keda you can scale your applications to zero. So, if you don't have any load, the application is scaled to zero. If there is a load, the application is scaled appropriately. So it saves saves cost and you know all this all these problems that we are facing these days uh, with Kubernetes and trying to mitigate costs of our applications and on the on the uh, you know. Also trying to handle all the load and uh, everything, you know, that's coming to our application. While we're talking about this, can you also talk about, of course, Kubernetes is, of course, mature folks are running. I mean, they have been running in production for a while, but we are talking about it, you know, like one or two years now. As it has moved to production, what are some of the day to pain points? And uh, I mean, of course, there are some challenges that come with a complex system like Kubernetes itself. But then there are a lot of challenges that folks start to see when things start to move in production. You did talk about some, but from your perspective, for uh, of course, Kedify's perspective, for Keda community's perspective, what are the some large challenges that you are seeing there that you feel that, hey, of course, these projects are going to solve them, but there are some project that uh, challenges that you see, hey, we have to address them as well. As I mentioned, like the the costs, because you know you can build like a build build a big big platform, but you know like the costs is a, is a is a something that you should consider all the time. So, um, and also like when you are building like these large applications on Kubernetes, like it comes with complexity because you know you can have multiple uh, modules, multiple components, and managing all these all these pieces together can be can be painful. So I think it important is to have like a good observability and monitoring stack. So then you can, you know, monitor your application, your platform, and based on that, you can decide, okay, maybe this, this part of the platform needs, you know, maybe some scale out, you know, we need more replicas. Maybe this is something that uh, we are over provisioning. So we are, you know, uh, we are having a lot of deployments of this component and, but we don't need it. So basically I think this is, this is like the uh, the challenge that we can we can see right now, like to get the correct metrics about like the usage of of different components of our application, and ba- and then configure like the the portfolio based on that. Now, can you also talk about the origin of the project? How where the pro- not, we talked about why the project started. Let's talk about where it started and how have you been involved with the project from the early days, and how you are still involved with the project. I'm still like involved with the project. I'm the I'm the maintainer of the project. One of the maintainers. And the project has been started in 2019 by Microsoft and Red Hat as a, uh, you know, joint uh, operation. We, we tried, you know, this, this POC on, uh, on auto-scaling. I, I joined like early on on this project and then we were, okay, this is, this is nice. This is something that can be, be beneficial for, for the whole community. So later on, the project has been donated to CNCF. It was like after a couple of months, we donated it into the Sandbox project. 
And then we start building the project with the help of CNCF, uh, getting you know maintainers from, from other companies. And uh, now we slowly progressed, or not slowly, but I would say uh, we nicely progressed to the, to the graduation phase. So it means that for us, it means like a, the project is mature enough. We have uh, we have a lot of users uh, of, of the project. Uh, there are some big companies, Reddit, uh, Xbox is using it, uh, internet, internal infrastructure. We have a lot of, lot of users, some user stories on the website. So the graduation for us was really like, a, um, let's say, uh, the you know the symbol for for like the community that we are we are mature enough for for production uh, setup. I mean, as you said, the project was started in 2019, a collaboration between Microsoft and Red Hat. Talk a bit about what kind of community is there today around this project, uh, and um, how is the community growing? How is the adoption you're seeing there? So, like the the traction around the project, I can see like a. I would say a lot of you, lot of new users coming, and I would say like the trend is is pretty stable. We st- still see like the increase in, of interest in the in the project, because um, the the goal that we are trying to achieve, I would say that there is no other like project that offers the same capabilities on Kubernetes. So basically, I would say that Keda is like the number one solution for for auto scaling of applications on Kubernetes. So we see a lot of a lot of users. You know, a lot of asks for new features, you know, uh, requests and etc. So, so I would say the community is healthy, but usually, you know, uh, more contributors we have is, is better. So I encourage everybody like, you know, to, uh, to reach out and uh, to work with us on community and improving, improving Keda because, you know, there is still a lot of, lot of things, to, things to do and to achieve. Can you also talk a bit about uh, what kind of community is there around the project? Of course, it was Red Hat and Microsoft that initially started the project. Of course, your Kedify is also there. But talk about how diverse is the community today? Who else is involved? Uh, regarding like the, the community as a whole, we, we can see like a lot of a lot of different users from different companies because they came and okay, we we need uh, to fix, for example, this this problem or we need this feature. So we, we see a lot of contributions from different companies, but usually they are like this one of contributions or. Uh, you know, not not stable ones, I would say. But from the like from the from the core, uh, what I can see, I would say is, is Microsoft, uh, Kedify, uh, and uh, SRM uh, International Hub, which is like the technological provider for Lidl uh, and uh, similar grocery stores. What does graduation mean for a project like Keda now? It, it, it can also be, hey, what does it mean for the project? At the same time, what does it mean for the users who are either consuming or looking at consuming it? What does it also mean for the community around Keda? So the, the, I want to understand the impact on these three constituents of the project. Yeah, so so the relation, I, from my point of view, like what I can see like for the users is basically that uh, they can be sure that the project is well maintained, you know, because to... To comply with the with the you know with the requirements for graduation project, you need to pass, you know, security check, security audit. You need to you know have a like the code ready. Uh, you need to have like licenses uh, ready on the on the on the project. So you need to you need to you know basically for to say it simple, I would say that the uh, users and the community knows that the project is healthy, it's well maintained, and it's mature enough you know to be used. Uh, we, you know, you don't have to be afraid that okay, uh, in two months the project will be will be uh, you know uh, suspended or something like that. So I would say this is the assurance for for users that that the project is in is in a good shape and it is is mature enough to be to be used. And being graduated, how does as a maintainer your day to day life change at the project? What does it mean for the you know the, the maintainers of the project or the community? I, I wouldn't say there is a, like a big big change big change like uh, in the in the day to day life because uh, it's it's more like a mark of the of the project rather than like some change in the in the processes or something like that. Uh, I hope I hope that the the graduation will you know bring us more contributors more users you know maybe maybe some maybe people interested in becoming maintainers of the project we always like welcome new faces so. I would say maybe like this, you know, getting get even more more traction from from the community. Can you also talk about the cadence, you know, the release cycle of this project? We usually uh, try to release a new version every three months. You know, it, it may be it may, it may be like a couple of weeks off, but basically we are trying to stick to this to this cadence. 
uh, and we as a community, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we, we like kind of support like community support, like the last three releases, I suppose. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but something like that. So we try to, to release new releases every three months. Uh, and uh, we always try to, you know, bring something new, new to the project, new features and, you know, new, new stuff. Can you also talk about what are the things that are in your pipeline? If you look at the future of Keda, of course, <laughs> it's open source projects. It will evolve with the changing time, but there are certain things you can look at. Hey, you can tell, hey, these are the things that you folks are working on. Yeah, sure. There are like a couple of uh, exciting features that we would like to add, add to Keda. So as I mentioned, like Keda is built on top of HPA, which is the Kubernetes uh, pod autoscaler, which is there. And we are extending the capabilities. Uh, but there are some limitations in the in the you know underlying stuff. So we are trying to mitigate from the from the Keda side because our main goal is to make like the uh, make it f as simple as possible from the user's perspective. So like there are some features that I would like to mention is like the we are trying to extend uh, the monitoring and observability stack. So this is the stuff I talked about before, which is important. So we would like to uh, expose expose more information about what's happening with the application. So let's say this application has been scaled out, scale, you know, scale in or something like that. Uh, and then another cool feature I would like to mention is that um, uh, we try to, you know, implement, let's say it's called formula based uh, evaluation of metrics. So uh, imagine that you are scaling your application based on some metric coming from one system. But maybe you, you have like multiple different systems and you would like to scale the application based on multiple metrics, but you would like to introduce some kind of logic between uh, between the metrics. So let's say if this metric is you know above 100, but this is uh, below 50, do this. So so more like this uh, query uh, query approach when you can specify the formula and uh, the 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 final scaling will be uh, will be a result of that. So this is this is the. I would say that the main main two main two areas that we are trying to improve at the moment, so which is the observability monitoring, and and this you know more advanced uh, uh, configuration uh, capabilities regarding metrics. Isbeniak, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this release. And I would love to chat with you folks again. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasant talk. Thank you. Thank you.